We are here in beautiful Sugarloaf Ridge State Park in Sonoma County, California. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how I do a creek scene. And uh, creek scenes are a little more tricky because the light changes within them a lot because of the, the sun position really changes the cast shadows on things. So it is really important that you're able to, to work quickly in order to capture the scene in front of you. So um, it's going to be a lot of just kind of figuring out the big shape and then deciding in the end where we're going to add our highlights. So um, let's start with the drawing, as always. Uh, it's dark enough scene, so I think I'm just going to use a lot of burnt umber and ultramarine blue, a little bit of white to get my drawing color down. And let's think about the possible compositions we could do here. Uh, one popular one for the creek would be kind of like a, an S curve, seeing how how these shapes kind of make a, an S around here. So that's one scenario. <laughs> like doing that. So let's go ahead and divide this into quarters. So, and the thirds is kind of like about that, more or less. <laughs> so, maybe we'll have this rock right there. And it's going to be probably a pretty dominant shape of the scene. So, definitely want to make sure that's covered in the drawing. These rocks kind of come out. And as the creek meanders into the forest there, it makes a turn. So, grab that there. That corner. And then just kind of loosely tracing where I feel the shape of the creek goes. It kind of comes toward me. And um, this tree up here I like as a part of the competition. And so really the rest of it is just like brush and tree shapes. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Maybe this trunk here, but I'm not going to focus too much on that fallen trunk here near the creek. It's just something to give me a way to fill up the space. And, okay, maybe I will end up using this tree that's coming through the, the top right corner. Because I kind of like what it does. It kind of helps everything become moved back into the focal point, which is like kind of want to make a subtle triangular shape leading things to this area of my composition. So, okay, that's really all I need for drawing, but just to clarify things for me, I'm going to reinforce my actual drawing instead of all these other lines that I made to help guide me. So let's go ahead and do that. Mix a little violet into my color that I'm drawing with. All right. Okay. It's a complicated scene, but I'm really just going to try and keep all the shapes simple. 
And so the first thing I will do, I think my block in method will be large shapes to small shapes and dark to light. So largest dark shape. Um, well, I could tell already what the darkest shape is. It's this big tree coming across the top right of the painting. So I'll go ahead and mix up something pretty dark out of my burnt umber and ultramarine blue and some of that violet. And I don't know, I might, for the sake of the painting, make it a little more interesting kind of tree branch that, or tree trunk. But okay, the next darkest thing is this trunk that's on the ground. Add a little bit of white and cadmium orange into it. It's a little lighter and a little warmer. Not worrying about the reflected light in the shape yet. A little bit of cadmium yellow in here to indicate the grass that's behind it. Just want a simple shape, so that's why I'm jumping to that. Okay, the next big bit of the painting. I guess I just did decide to go dark to or big shape to small shape. I'm still trying to do the average of the. dark to light. So this whole part of the creek is almost the same value and color because it's reflected into this back shape down here. So. so all of this can be consolidated into one big shape. We're not going to worry too much yet. If it's the right color or shape, I'm just averaging it out here. And it's almost the same color down here, maybe just a little darker. If it's reflecting in the water here. Okay. Next, we'll go to the shape of that rock a little yellow ochre, a little green. These shapes are all connected, they're all going to get the same color and value. And it's all greener over here, I think. Some yellow ochre back into it. Had in red. Next will be the other part of the creek, starting with green, gold, and white, and we're going to gray that down with some burnt sienna. 
Moon Viridian. Down in here. Next, I will take some viridian and burnt umber. Get this all in. So I got a little lighter. Green gold. Trees could use some color as well. I'm going to go too light, but just enough to separate. Okay. Next are the light shapes. And some of these have been relatively consistent. So I'll just go ahead and put those in. Being a little bit more deliberate with my uh, brush strokes here, because there's not as much ground to cover. I'm not having to scrub it in so much so I can make these brush strokes a little more interesting put a little more color into them or uh, paint a little into this. Tree branch here on this. That's a little too light. Yeah, the lightest part of the paint. Okay, now, establishing the light and dark pattern a bit more. Um, this is all pretty low-key scene already, so it's all leaning towards shadow anyway, but 
there are within the shapes, even in the shadow side, like lighter parts of the shadow and darker parts of the shadow. So we'll try and treat it in that way. So like for example, this tree trunk, that big one that we started with. A little bit darker. in one area of it. And a little bit lighter in the other. Getting a little bit of detail in it will keep it from looking, I don't know, like a shape that doesn't make any sense. So, kind of indicating a trunk there. All right, and um, let's switch to it. Smaller brush. No, this is still a little. All right, here we go. It's trunk on the ground. Has a darker part to it. So if you think you're going as dark as you can and it still doesn't feel dark enough, that means the shape is too dark and you need to lighten it. Lighten the area around it. So that's what I'm going to have to do on this. That's a really dark color there. And I think what's also going on is it's not cool enough. So I'm adding some ultramarine blue. A little bit of violet. Okay. Again, so it's like a darker part of the rock that comes out right here, so that's what we'll indicate. This side is darker but cooler. I'm going to give these blue. This rock down here is cooler. Make sure that's indicated. Same with this rock.
Some variation in the light and shadow in this one as well, so I put that in. down here to this shape. A little coolness in it, so I add a little manganese blue. And even in the reflection, there's a difference between the temperature for that side, and there's a little value difference. Of this tree or bushes in the shadow. Come back to the right side and do it as well. The ultramarine blue. Using my cool darks to get these darker shapes up here, just because they contrast with the warmer darks I have. Okay. Just keep going through and finding those other little dark shapes.
kind of just averaging out the edge too, where I'm not worrying too much about every individual part of the edge and just making an average decision on what type of edge that whole shape has. Okay, I think that's all the darks. Come back in and put in the lights. So the lights in the shadow are going to be my reflected lights. But make sure that you're, they're not too bright. You don't want them to be competing with the actual lights. They're just mostly here to show the form of what you're painting. Planes that are reflecting a lot of light. I'll paint just a little lighter than what was underneath and a little cooler. If you start to paint them too light, then it kind of destroys the, the overall shadow, light and shadow pattern that you've created so far. Really gotta be careful not to go too high in value. You still want everything to be in shadow, just a difference in value within the same um, like ratio of the shape you have. Just fixing this on the fly. <laughs> but it's a belly shape. Actually, it's a little darker at the edge. Uh, yeah. back over here to this grass. Make it a little lighter, a little cooler. When you go lighter in the shadows, a lot of times you'll go cooler because you're getting some of the um, color of the sky reflected into your shadows.
Got a light in the canopy. Green in the wall of the creek there, so I'll put that some of that in. Okay, now we'll get some of the actual light sign. Clean off my palette a little so that my dark mixtures don't contaminate my light mixture. Just restart. I don't want to go super light in the beginning, and you'll have no room to go lighter or dark if you're just painting in that average. So let's go ahead and put this in. light color reflecting into the okay. another light shape there. That reflection of the ferns or whatever down here as well. I'm back in to reestablish those darks before I you know it with lighter. Just looking at really subtle differences in the light in order to make the detail of that rock or the rocky shore without having to actually paint every little rock will still read like a rocky shore. And uh, let's see what else we need to 
Allah Okay. So I think we can begin to compare now everything we got. Um, there's still some parts I could work on a little more, but that's okay. Well, actually, I will. I just missed this whole shape here, so I'm back in the do a light and dark pattern on it. Okay. Uh, oh, let me get this tree. Okay, we just established the piece, so we'll start to come in and compare. And I think comparing is going to be the longest stage of this. I don't know. We, we took a while to establish it just because it's so complicated, but um, yeah, let's go in and start to see what we could compare to each other. So I'll start with the darkest part here. I don't think I could still go cooler. So I'm taking violet and altering blue, a little bit of the under. And when we get to this amount of darkness, it's mostly going to be color temperature shifts to give the illusion of darkness by contrasting. Shape of these branches are darker than the raised part of the bark. Putting those uh, crevices of the bark in, and I don't know, I probably won't need to do much beyond that. And so, I'm going to pretty much establish that as being the darkest area of the painting, I believe. So, let's try and make these are slightly darker. I have as little white in your brush as possible when you're painting your darks because it'll always make it grayer and lighter than you want.
looking at that, it's supposed to be way darker than what I have. Eh, I don't know. It's warmer and grayer, so. Adding some green and red. Oops, that's too light. This little shape in here separate. That's probably too light, but I can always go back and add a little darker green. Still reads as different. Okay. Shape of the rest of the spark is a little cooler. A little lighter than I have it, but not quite that light. And it becomes a gray. It's this is like a purple color that I have. And this is bark here. Put that in. It's been kind of shifting here, but yeah, I could definitely tell this area gets in the grass is cooler than what's next to it. Except as it gets darker, so. Put some alternating between ultramarine blue and for umber to modify the color. So if it's cooler, ultramarine blue, it's warmer for umber. I'm just fixing the value. Go to this rock. I feel like it's gotten darker since we 
have been adjusting things, so. The light on my canvas is much different than the light that I was painting in before. Well, we have, I'll just have to be careful not to overcompensate. Really studying the color temperature and seeing if I need to go warmer, cooler, and how. Like, am I going to use blue or green? These rocks are much cooler than how I painted them, so I'm back in fixing that. as it gets closer to the shore, a little more green. There might be moss on the rocks or whatever, but let's put that in. Ferns are a relatively warm green, but they definitely go cooler in the shadow than what I had before. So cadmium yellow and manganese blue together. Dark it down a little ultramarine blue. And you got the top. Things are changing on me rapidly, so I don't have a lot of time to work on temperature shifts. Not as much as I would like. So we'll just have to make the quicker decisions. Let's see if there's a little more violet in the browns here. I think overall these browns might be tad too warm. Some violet and maybe even ultramarine blue. I'm 
needs to change down here in the creek. And let's say this gets darker. Not quite as cool. Fix our mixture and then try again. Just gotta keep fixing your mixtures as you go along. Darker and maybe greener back here. There's the dark spot here. It's kind of a very warm dark actually. Yes. Darker than that mixture can go. Start over. Ultramarine blue. Noise are incredible. That's a little better. But too shaky I made is too red. Put some green back into it. I don't know if I have enough time really to compare more. So we might just have to get going into the refinement stage. I mean, there's still things here and there to find, but I think as I go, I'll keep fixing things. So the scene with this rapidly changing light, the danger is that you end up fixing or changing everything as you chase the, the um, light shapes as you keep painting, but you really got to stick with what your original plan is, and that might have to cause you to invent things here and there, but if you st still can find little things that will, that you can use as a guide for comparing a color, go for those. Get a light. Okay. I'm just going to keep going out from where I started here and continue to make little micro comparisons. So as I make these comparisons, I'm just kind of just radiating out a little bit from my point of focus so like I know this part will end up being the most worked on area since it's my focal point and I think as long as everything else is worked out to a satisfactory degree as far as um, color, value, and shape go, 
then as long as I get a part that's really worked out near my focal point, your eye kind of fills in the rest of the information. Your brain kind of wants to do that. A lot of times that's why loose paintings are so appealing to people because they um, they give your eyes and brain a puzzle to figure out. And you just kind of fill in um, all the details in your head. It's a little bit of brain stimulation. <laughs> Uh, notice how I'm not actually like painting anything that would make you think, oh, that's water. It's really, I just realized I'm totally. Got a part of the drawing. <laughs> but in order to make the water read like water. It's just really more like how I'm painting the reflections and the quality of edges and, and brush direction I'm going in that will indicate more that's water than trying to add like, I don't know, um, like the water, like ripples in the water, for example. It's really just Instead, the shapes and the edges. So, just going in and finding all the little shapes and just making an average of each shape as far as color and value goes. There's some tiny little shapes that are distinct enough to put in like the darks and that helps as well to establish the edge of the water. Going in and these highlights aren't like 
pure white or anything. They're actually pretty colorful. They have a lot of color mixed into them. And okay. Since the light has changed so much on that, I really can't touch it without without making it uh, so I'm just going to leave that as it is and just kind of go out from there and adjust to what I'm seeing in front of me now so there's a light shape that has to be covered with a dark shape because I don't think that one's coming back These bushes are almost now in shadow, so I just got to make some new shape there. You got to determine if you see some new light shapes if they will help your composition. So for example, there's this neat light that's hitting this, this uh, this log on the ground here. So does it help to add it? I think it kind of does. a little bit of color difference in the highlight. Here. So that kind of helps me trace some light back to this area in the foreground or in the Background, really. Um, okay. Let's indicate some of these brambles back here. And now catching some light. They're light, but they're still going to have a lot of yellow and green in them. And there's a difference in the color temperature, so you're going to want to alternate between cooler and warmer greens while still staying in the same range of value. Maybe add some manganese blue back into it. Some branches that come out. So just mix a lighter brown and just kind of draw it in. Have a light touch. You don't want to handle the brush like you're trying to write your name in cursive with the brush. That's about the amount of, um, of pressure and dexterity that you'll want when you're doing 
linear detail. Just a little bit. Here. Squinting at it, I could see I could go a little lighter in this area. With the lightest, juiciest highlight. Around the edges of the highlight, you're going to want to put a little bit of color into it. Because it simulates how when you're, when you look at something that's being struck by the sun, there's still little areas of color around the bright part. And it creates a halo effect. There's some spill off of the light in the atmosphere. So if you light in the areas just around the highlight too, that heightens the effect. Just a couple little things here and there. There's not much I can do because our light has changed so much. So there's just little bits of detail here and there, like the shadow of these rocks in the water. Some little ripples in the water here and there. But I do like in warm. Careful not to make these too light. So I actually added some purple into my manganese blue. White mixture. Those aren't really standing out enough. I'm a little lighter actually. This guy. Kind of indicates some of the darks and these raw shapes, just so it gives me that texture I'm after. But I actually don't want to put highlights out here, even though I'm seeing them, because it's just going to take away from this area here. If you have a piece of of light color taking attention away. Um, let's see. I am going to get rid of some of this light shape over here because one, it's gone from my scene I'm looking at, and two, it actually, I think, takes a little focus away from, from this area here where I want you to be more focused on, so.
Might be too brown. Get some viridium back in. I'm dabbing my paint on a bit just so it has a little bit more of the forest texture to it. I don't want to paint every single difference in this painting. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I believe this will be as far as I will paint this. Let me add a little highlight on this point. <laughs> cool. And so, yeah, this method gives you a way to uh, not get too lost trying to chase the light. If you have everything set up in the beginning, you can almost choose where where to put the the highlights in afterwards, and it, uh, as long as you give yourself a base to to put those highlights over, you can make sure that you stay focused. And really, it's just about setting the scene around you, and uh, that gives you the ability to determine where you want to uh, put your light in after you have everything set up so uh, in this way you can make sure that you're never too lost trying to capture the light or chase the light really uh, you're not locked into where you first decide to to put your highlights in or not even your highlights just the, the light shapes in your scene and you can then determine if you want to put your highlights in those light areas or if you think that the scene has changed so much the, the patterns can change to a different area and you can do that much more easily if you have everything set up around your highlights than trying to go about it um, like in a in a more haphazard way so yeah following the method getting all the basic shapes down first and determining the light and shadow pattern then you can go in and decide where to add all your highlights so all right that does it for this video